Just two weeks ago, we talked about the most broken defensive item in Madden Ultimate Team in the form of Cam Chancellor's Super Bowl past. And it's only taken two weeks for it to be dethroned. There is a new king of the hill in Ultimate Team on the defensive side of the ball. This card is cheaper from a coin expenditure, although it's not cheap. And it's definitely cheaper from an AP expenditure because it's going to save you guys an AP point. And you're going to get everything and then some from a coverage standpoint. For those that don't know what card I'm talking about, we are actually talking about the Kevin Byard Genki Force card. Now, if you don't know what a Genki Force is, that's okay. Join the club. I don't know what a Genki Force is. But I'm going to tell you right here how this card works. You guys are going to want to go and acquire this. You can buy this off the auction house if you want to. You could do a set. I would actually recommend doing the sets because it's going to give you a token uh, as far as your field pass goes. So you can get a token that can help power this card up. This card is essentially, and this program is essentially the return of power ups in Madden Ultimate Team. Love them or hate them, this is basically what this program is. And what you're going to do is you're going to pay training to kind of unlock that first tier that team chemistry and ability slot and then from here this is where you can either put in a genki force champion or an elevation pass high token to get this first tier and then if you want to power them up a second time you can either add another genki force champion or elevation pass high token and then you can once again do it again with another genki force champion basically it's going to take three tokens or three champions or any combo of the two and once you do this this is going to unlock the final three buckets so in this particular bucket the third to last bucket you are going to use a free pick artist this is going to be a passive ability it's always there he's always going to catch interceptions i skipped this bucket but just so you guys know it is basically bench press for one or deep in for one you're not going to do anything here just wait and then in this final bucket, we're going to use mid zone for zero rather than paying any AP for deep zone for two. And the reason that we want to do this is because not only do you get these free passive buckets when you upgrade their elevation, you see that we're elevation three. This also unlocks special X factors in their X factor bucket. And a lot of players are glossing over how powerful these are right now. I would say that this is probably what makes this the best card in the game. So what we're looking at right here is universal coverage elevated three. For those that don't know what universal coverage is, this is basically every coverage ability in the game, with the exception of the fatigue ones like bench press or chuck out. So for those that don't know, that is one step ahead, which is going to prevent route text from lighting up. It's really going to stop the first cut of any route, post, corners. You guys get the drift. It was meta last year. It's also short route, medium route, and deep route knockouts in man coverage. And it's also flat zone, mid zone, deep in, and deep out zone KOs in zone and this is going to be a x factor that lights up after three plays and once it's lit up it will not turn off unless you catch a ball directly on him now as i just mentioned it's every knockout in the game so how do you actually catch a ball on kevin byard you don't but even if you do this card is going to turn right back on three plays later that is the cooldown before it turns back on and it does not turn off unless you do something to turn it off. So basically there is really no penalty outside of waiting three plays. Again, those three plays, you're gonna have a free pick artist in a free mid zone. So you're fine. If he's off, he's still a great card, especially for zero AP. Oh, by the way, did I mention this X factor is free. So let's go ahead and take this into some gameplay here because I think that you guys are going to want to take a look at, you know, uh, some of this action that I have here. This is from a stream the other day, which if you guys aren't following me on Twitch, make sure you guys do. So I stream Tuesday through Friday in the afternoons, also working some weekends. So here I am. I'm kind of setting up my roster um, the way I'm running my roster right now. You guys can get my exact AP setup. Do not look at the part below. This is all incorrect down here below because I've updated it since this stream. But basically, I'm going to be running Kevin Byard in the slot. So uh, you're going to see that he's off for right now. My opponent starts the game off with a little RPO action. If you guys struggle with that RPO, I did the top 10 RPO video. I'm actually going to pull this defense out here uh, in this particular video. And you're going to see that I'm going to be running that cover six from my top 10 countdown. So go check that out. Uh, everything I post here on the channel is stuff I actually run just for what it's worth. I'm not out here showing you stuff I don't actually use. So, um, so we have one more play here, I believe. Uh, 
uh, it's either two or three plays to light up. Um, again, I've only been using this overnight, but this is an important upload for you guys. So you see right here, he goes out to the flat. I had some zone drops on. Okay, so that's two plays in. Now we're kind of expected, okay, like, are we going to get lit up? Yes. Now our X factor in the slot is lit up and my opponent is ready to roll. Now from this point forward, my opponent has to complete a pass on Kevin Byard in order for him to be turned off. And you see right here, he doesn't like what he's looking at. So he throws a, a knockout into the corner there on the left sideline set up second down and 10. So again, keeping in mind that it's going to be really hard to complete a pass on Byard, basically if he's in a deep zone, he's got deep zone KO. If you throw a ball underneath, is it going to be considered a catch in traffic on him? We don't really know. And even if it does, you're probably going to knock it out if it's in traffic. And if you don't, then you just go back to having pick artists in mid zone for free for two more plays until it turns right back on. So again, you're not really penalized too much. And one of the speculation points that I was seeing in my chat is, okay, this whole turn off condition like what is completing a pass on him mean and we were kind of testing it out it's like okay well it's gonna be hard to throw a pass on him so like whatever i can live with it if you complete a pass on him fine it's all the other stuff i don't want to drag i don't want something else to be completed that's going to basically turn him off you know if somebody throws a ball underneath and he's kind of in the area does it turn him off the answer to this is pretty much no as you're going to see so you see right here we're still lit up here on this play uh you know he's going to run this a little auto motion he's looking for the you know the screen throws it over the middle so there's a completion so i'm wondering okay he was in the area is this going to turn him off no you see he's still lit up he basically has to be thrown directly at and caught a pawn in a two-man interaction for him to turn off. Here we go, another little screen call. You see the reroute. He's playing, uh, you know, a, a crossing route for some match, and you see that we get an interception. So now I'm back the other way here. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of keep him moving forward, uh, try to get through my drive here so that way you guys can get back on the defensive side of the ball. I know that's the stuff that you guys care about. Um, so score a touchdown. Now we're back on defense. Oh, never mind, forced another fumble. So we're still on offense. Sorry about that. We'll get moving here. Took a field goal. All right, so now we're back on defense. And as you can see, he's still lit up in the slot. My opponent is now running something completely different because his little gun doubles offense isn't working. He goes and throws a ball out there in the flat, and it was knocked out by somebody else on my team, which kind of shows you I've got room for other abilities now at this point because of the fact that He's zero AP for every ability in the game. And the thing is, I can move him around. He can play the nickel corner role. He can play a safety. I can man him up if I want to, you know, in a particular offense that I'm facing, if it's like, oh, I need to put my left safety and man-to-man -man coverage on this guy, Bayard's going to go play that role because he's got man coverage abilities on top of his own coverage abilities. So you see again there, there's Bayard actually in that example. That's a clear example of him making a crazy play. He's in a middle third with his zone KO. He throws to somebody else on a corner route. Here comes Bayard, cuts his legs out from underneath. I mean, the card is a freak of nature level card, and he is so hard, so hard to actually throw at. Uh, again, watch this replay. You see Bayard dropping middle third. I'm playing the crossing route underneath. He throws it to the corner route and Bayard gets there from center field uh, on top of the fact that we had another guy ready to roll as well. So here we are, third down and 10. Again, my opponent trying to you know run this little offense that he's in, this little spread offense uh, popularized by K-Mac. Um, you know, very, very good offense. Uh, but if you have the right, the right coverage, it takes the RPOs out and this becomes a little bit less effective. Um, we see right here is going to go with a little S post trying to throw against the match and boom, we're all over it. That's Traverius Ward. But again, the point here is that this is a zero AP card that I think a lot of people are gravely, gravely overlooking. Um, I think a lot of people are obsessed with the speed. I've seen comments on, you know, the, the forums, uh, the Mutt GG comments where people are saying this card's terrible. Uh, and, and the truth is it's really the best card in the game. It really is. If, if you're that scared about his speed, figure out a way to find 25 Eagles, bump him up a point. Uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. I mean, when you think about the fact that he's got a break on ball bonus anywhere on the field, that 95 zone is, or that 95 speed rather is going to feel closer to 97, 98. When you factor that he's got, 
you know, uh, uh, one step ahead, that cut that creates separation where you might worry about being slower is not going to happen because he's going to light up to get that one step ahead and stay on top of the route. And then he's got KO from behind. So as long as he's within range of that 95 speed, I would actually argue that EA did this on purpose to make sure that he isn't like truly, truly God. I mean, he gets basically 90, what, 97 speed on a full theme team. Bump him up with the 25 Eagles or 25 Titans. If he's on a full Titans or full Eagles theme team, then he's basically undeniably the best player in the game. But right now, even on a God squad is like a player that isn't benefiting from a theme team. I still think he's the best player in Mutt. So I want to get this video out to you guys. I, I, I know he's expensive. I do know he's expensive, but I wouldn't put this video out if it wasn't for something that I think a lot of players are overlooking. And this is truly, truly it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys on Monday. I'm still going to be doing that uh, that zone free forming video. You guys hit that other upload from today to 200 likes. I will follow up with that on Monday. I'll see you guys then. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab and good luck.